Well, hello friends, it's Sandy, and welcome to my YouTube channel where today we're gonna color a glass vase or glass jar with Copic markers. A lot of you have asked about coloring them so they look like the flowers are inside the jar and not setting on top of it. So I'm gonna show you some ideas for both stamping and coloring with this clearly besotted set. There's two bouquets of flowers and two different types of vases. And I wanna show you some things about both of those. First, I'm gonna use this simpler vase, which has a top on it that's completely flat. So the person drawing it drew it completely from the side. And I'm gonna mask it off. You can see that the pink sticky note blocks off the stamping, so that means I can't see through it. If you use yellow stickies, I figured out you could see through them. So use yellow stickies instead of pink, but this worked. I have my flowers on the top. I'm gonna to stamp it off a couple times and do third generation stamping, or you can even do fourth in order to do this technique. And I'm going to not re-ink my stamp and just stamp it on top. I can see through the yellow sticky so I can line it up a little bit better. And there you can see I've got a lighter impression inside the glass jar. It's gonna make my coloring go easier. This jar is a little bit different. It's drawn from a little higher angle, so it has an oval top and oval bottom. And so what I'm going to do is wipe off with an absorber. There will be links in the description to all these products. Um, this wipes off ink very well from stamps. And it didn't print that top line. So my flowers are going to look like they're in front of the back of the jar, if that makes sense, in front of the back. I'm making a really quick mask because I want that oval shape for the bottom of the flower bunch that I'm going to stamp in there. So I just want to cover up that bottom part of the jar and I will ink up the daisies this time and the daisies will get stamped right on top of there. I can nest them right down to where the top of the jar is and I can see right through where my my mask is and get that lined up. Stamp it off a couple times and then mask off the top. This one I can mask off just with a plain straight sticky note because the alignment of that that little top of the jar with this very light stamping is not going to matter. So now that has lighter lighter color stamping in the bottom section. Now I'm going to apologize. My focus is a little soft in this coloring section of the video, but you can still see what I'm doing. So I'm leaving it and not going to refilm everything. So I'm using B21 and a B000 to create basically some kind of stripes of shininess on the glass itself and this you know works in different ways for different types of things really depends on how much reflection there is but as a crafter if you can just put some highlights in there in a blue or a gray or a blue violet whatever kind of color you want to use for it and then use a softer color for your stems in the jar than you're using for the stems that are outside the jar then that will generally create the illusion of these things being inside a glass jar. And you can see here that I'm just kind of sketching them softly. It, it's not all the soft focus. I'm actually trying to make them a little squishy because you're not gonna see real clearly through a glass to the objects inside. And I've chosen a darker color for the stems up on top. And you can see already the difference between them makes it pretty obvious that those stems are inside the glass jar. I wanted a little more color in the bottom, but I didn't want to go for the strength of another marker, so I, I'm just doing the tip-to-tip -tip technique, touching the YG03 to the YG06 and adding some, some color to it. And here I'm doing my daisies. I'm just going to speed through this part because we're all about the jar today. And I'm using my N markers. You could use your C's easily or whatever colors you want to make your flowers in. I'm just putting my shadow, darkest shadows toward the centers and then softening them out with very, very light gray so that there'll be some pretty white daisies. The centers of these, I'm gonna add a couple different colors to just to add some depth to them. And a lot of people wouldn't use three colors <laughs> in little tiny spots like this. But since there's very little other coloring, I thought it was worth putting that extra effort into that. Now here's the other jar, and this time I'm going to start by coloring the leaves on top first. Because sometimes 
it helps in order to see how much contrast you need in the jar itself in the bottom part it helps to have a little bit of color somewhere else on the image so I've got my darker green up on top again same thing as I did last time and my lighter green on the stems that are inside the jar and you can do the stems first or the blue first whichever you want because I'm switching it around deliberately so you can see you can do either way one of the tips you'll probably notice here is that I'm leaving a little white outline around the outside of the jars when I do this and then I'm just putting some random before on the last one since it was a, a straight edged base it had straight stripes and this one has more oval shapes uh, to create that glass look the reflections and things and you could leave the glass as as it is right here you don't have to do this next step that I'm going to do but I wanted to show you how to add water to the jar as well pick your place where the water level is going to be and then skip around don't make it a completely even line across the whole thing but make that that darker area come from about the same spot. You can make it a little wavy. I'm kind of making mine a little bit wavy because as the water gets up to those stems, if you haven't actually look at it inside of our glass vase, you'll see that the water kind of, I don't know, it, it sort of undulates a little bit around the stems and kind of goes up the edge of the stems. But, you know, straight would work too, but a little wavy seems to, to look more natural to me. I'm adding a little bit of a gray color in order to add some strength to some of the shadows and then going over top of it with the blue just to knock it back a little bit and make it more, fit more into the blue colors that I've already been using here. So I'm adding a little more strength now to my, my uh, stems as well before I move back up into the flowers that are sticking out of the vase. And I'm gonna add a couple different greens to the leaves so that I can get some dimension going on in them and I'm using a G09 and the reason that I chose that color is not because of anything special except for I have this one in the original body. The original bodies have this bullet nib and they make doing tiny details like this really easy. So you may want to get a couple colors in the original bodies in order to be able to do tiny drawing things like that. Now I'm going to zoom through coloring the roses as well and I've done a couple of videos already on coloring red roses and red poinsettias and I'll link you to some of those in the description down below but I also wanted to show them to you here these are tiny roses and my other red flowers a poinsettia and a rose have been giant flowers so this will show you a little bit how to do smaller ones so I'm using an R05 for the base color and it's more of a tomato red than a cherry red and my usual R89 and R37 for my dark and my mediums. The R89 and R37 are colors that work really well with both the cherry and the tomato reds. And the cherry are more purpley, the tomato are more orangey, if that makes sense. Um, did a little study of those in my Edu Digi series, so you can check that out. I will put a link to that in the doobly doo as well and uh, you can download those to get lots more information about color families so when i did the reds i talked about the difference between cherry and tomato reds so you can see that the r37 is blending really nicely with the r05 and i wanted to add i always go back over all of my coloring for the most part with whatever the base color was if i went back over this with the r05 my red highlights would get darker so what I chose to do instead for this particular one was to go back over instead with a pink so I went with an R22 and that adds moisture and blends color but it doesn't add a whole lot more red to it if I use the zero marker it would erase color so this sort of splits the difference between the two so those are all done Here's my finished rose card. I put some texture paste in the background with using a stencil and I used some pretty pink posh dyes to create my layout for it. And I also put a couple of glossy accent dots of dew onto my flowers. And I think that really just adds a whole lot of interest to them to do that. And here's the daisies. Again, another pretty pink posh pair of dyes, both the strip and the little windows and some pretty pink posh 
uh, little sequins as well. And I did add water level to the daisies. I went back and did that after I finished because I thought it just really needed that. Oh, do you hear fireworks in the background? <laughs> I do. It must be summer. All right. Here are a couple other videos if you'd like to watch those. There are links to them in the description as well. And I will see you guys again next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends if you found it helpful. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.